This is second. Hey. Hey. Is everything all right? Yeah. Can I come in? Yeah. Yeah. Some, uh, some tea or something? I'm fine. Did you ever see Grease? What, the movie? Yeah. Uh, yeah, some of it. Way back. It's always been a guilty pleasure of mine, that movie. Okay. Olivia Newton-John played this girl, Sandy, and she really liked this John Travolta character, Danny. And he really liked her a lot, too. But she came from a really strict background, and... Everyone thought she was this real square. But in the end, she says, hell with it. And she let her hair down. And she shows up at this fair in these leather pants. Okay, now that part I remember. So as I was watching it last night, it dawned on me that I've... I've been really wrapped up with work, you know, too much. And... I haven't let my hair down with you. And you were right yesterday when you said we could use a little spontaneity. Do you want to get spontaneous with me, Baldwin? Gibson called. He's going to be a little late. You know how I got a page from last night? His niece, Cynthia. You two dated, right? No, we had dinners. And half the reason it didn't work out was Gibson was constantly sticking his nose in my business. And now he's working in our squad and she's paging me. She called here as well. What? A half hour ago, asking if you were in. She didn't want to leave a message, but I recognize her voice. Good morning, everyone. Donuts. I'll put them in the coffee room. What? A donut truck overturn outside? No, I bought them in for the squad. <laughs> what, I gotta have a reason? Two years you never bought donuts. I didn't, don't eat them if they're that long. What'd you get? 15 squad. Just one moment, please. I thought you said you liked her. I'm not saying I didn't, but what she was looking for, I uh, I couldn't deliver on that. Yeah, check you out, talking like a player. Yeah, watch it. <laughs> yeah, uh, Cynthia. Andy Sipwitz. How's it going? I got your page. Is it about anything in particular or just checking in? Yeah, as a matter of fact, uh, Uncle Eddie is working in our squad now. Uh-huh. Yeah, okay. Uh, what time do you take lunch? All right. I'll call. No, I won't tell him that we talked. I promise. Mm-hmm. Okay. She wants to meet now. Let a player play. I'm not going to tell you again. We got a baby taken out of maternity ward at Jefferson Hospital. Director of security there is Paul Cataldo. Everybody. You Cataldo? Yeah. What's going on? Patient here, Donna Berryhill, had her baby taken. When? 7.15. Two hours ago? I got my own security force here, and we did our best to handle it in-house. Well, there's people walking in and out downstairs. You haven't closed down the exit yet? I got my men stationed at each exit. Close them down. Nobody leaves without ID. And get uniform to search a building. We already did a complete search. Well, now we are, too. What kind of security do you have up here? Electronic transmitters attached to the baby's umbilical cord. If they're removed from the room, an alarm goes off and both double doors lock. And I guess that didn't work. Yeah, I'm trying to figure out what happened there. You have video? It downstairs in the lobby. Where's the nurse in charge of the missing baby? Julie Chin. So, how are we working this? We'll be taking over from here. We'll find you if we need you. Nurse Chin? I don't know what happened. Did the alarm sound? Oh, yes, speaking. and the door is locked. You see anything? They go off a lot. They usually false alarms. So no one looked. Andy, uh, there's an awesome fire at TV repair shop that ball when I gotta respond to it. Take care of the exits? Yeah, that's done. All right, and get ESU to check all the garbage cans and dumpsters within two blocks from there. Mother share a room with anybody? 
No, I don't know how this could happen. No? How about no one checking the alarm went off for starters? All right, you two talk to the mom. I'll start hitting up the staff. All right. Sorry I'm late, Andy. What's going on? Look, Gibson, I don't have time to go into all the details, huh? You go help with the cops, the front entrance, checking IDs. Mr. and Mrs. Berryhill, I'm Detective McDowell, this is Detective Clark. Did you find her, baby? No, uh, but we're doing everything we can. Please find her. We're absolutely going to do our best. How the hell can something like this happen? They, they don't have security here. I mean, what the hell? What happened this morning? Uh, she fell asleep, and I went to take a shower. I was gone for maybe five minutes. Okay, were you here? Yeah, I went to the cafeteria, get something to eat. Uh, the baby had finally fallen asleep, and we thought we had time to take care of some things. Who found her missing? I did. You notice anyone unusual hanging around your room? There's so many people walking around out there. We're going to need you back home so we can put a trap on your phone, in case you get a call from the people who did this. You mean like a kidnapping? We don't know. We ain't got any money. Is that what you guys are going to be focusing on? We don't know what the motive might have been behind this, so we got to cover all the bases. I'm not going to leave without my baby. This needs to happen. Hey, if you feel better staying here, I'll go back home and do this. Okay? Okay. Can you give us a couple minutes first? Of course. <laughs> Tonight on TNT, see back to back up. Hey. Arabs. Two brothers on the business. Both families live above it. Teenage daughter had a shelf come down on her where they're trying to put the fire out themselves. She's a Jefferson. Crime scene and bias units are on their way. Did that anything? Nah, no one's come forward. The owners are going on about this local kid who's been hassling them up, Chris Padgett. Are we checking out? This your sector? Yeah. Anybody else jump out? Nah, they've been getting a lot of flack since the attacks. I couldn't even begin to narrow down who might have done this. Thanks. Uh, are we sure this is awesome? Yeah. Molotov cocktail. As soon as we mop up, we're out of here. Detectives Jones and Metavoy. You're the owners? Chris Paget. He lives two blocks down. You saw him do this? No, but he was across the street when the firemen were putting it out. Clapping his hands. He's always insulting us, wishing bad things on us. One time we had to call the police. Here. Chris Paget. If it's not him, then he'll know who did this. All right, we'll look into it. Will you really? You're just saying that. He's saying, he's saying, we do. We're going to do our best to find out who did this, sir. Anyone else you've had problems with? Chris Paget. We got him. We're asking, is there anyone else? My daughter's in the hospital now. Let's go check on her. There's nothing more we can do here. We'll be at Jefferson Hospital. USA! USA! Oh, this is gonna suck. Well, I can give a message. Uh, uh, a counselor who works at the hospital calling from home. Detective Clark, nothing from crime scene on Prince yet, and that bloodhound from K-9 unit didn't catch a scent. You interview all the staff? McDowell and Gibson are still doing that. <clears throat> we got a list of uh, staff who aren't scheduled today, plus women who have had miscarriages and stillborns in the last month. Oh, and a, a nurse got a call yesterday asking about the Williams baby, but... No Williams was a patient there. And trace the call? I put a uniform on the maternity switchboard with the caller ID box if they get any other calls like that. Let's go with this at the local news. Start getting the word out, see if the public can provide a tip. This grief counselor met with a woman three days ago who had a stillborn. She was hysterical, said she'd do anything to have a baby. Probably worth looking at. She lives over on the west side. All right, get Connie to respond and keep Gibson interviewing staff. Sit down. Uh, Mr. Padgett, Greenwich TV got torched this morning. Yeah. <laughs> Bummer, huh? Looks like you had a pretty serious beef with the owners. Uh, I'd stop by, I'd give them some advice from time to time. Who were you this morning at eight? At work. Where's work? Eddie's body and paint. Ask Eddie. As you ask his wife, she keeps the books. So you went across the street when Grand's TV was burning? <laughs> Hell yeah, I was. 
Enjoying the view? I heard a fire truck, so I went to see what the deal was. Listen, we all know these are Arabs who own the place. So if you couldn't take it anymore, and maybe you lost some people in the attacks. Well, we can understand that. I mean, we're at war with these people. If looking at these people every day got to you, seeing how good they're living in our country, it's understandable you snap. Yeah, we get a lot of cases like this, and uh, we'll work it out, if you know what I mean. But our job is we got to find out who did it. Now, we can help them once we do. But we got to find out. Don't find out. Write down your work info so we can verify it. If it was you, Chris, so you knew and didn't tell us, we're not going to be able to help you then. I don't know who did it. But I do know. Those people, they don't belong here anymore. Take off. Can I get you anything? No, uh, I'm fine, thanks. What's the investigation you're working on? Uh, there was a complaint at Jefferson Hospital and we're talking to people who stayed there recently, like yourself. Okay. That you were discharged three days ago? Yes. And what were you in for? I was in the maternity ward. And how is everything? She was still born. I'm so sorry. We've been trying for so long. 20,000 we spent on in vitro. Well, then I got pregnant the old-fashioned way, but... That must be very hard. Do you have any children? Yes, I have a daughter. Cherish her. I do. So what's the complaint against the hospital? There was a baby taken from the maternity ward this morning. Oh, my God. So we're looking into that. Did you come here because you thought I stole the baby? Well, we're asking a lot of people. That's our job. I lose my own baby. I had to go through that. And now on top of it, I get accused of stealing? What? Well, I didn't accuse you. You knew my baby was stillborn when you came here, didn't you? If yours was taken, wouldn't you want me out there following every lead I could, trying to get her back? I didn't steal a baby. And you can go now. I'm sorry for what you've been through. Are you sure Uncle Eddie won't be coming back? Yeah, he's out in the field. Oh, thanks for taking the time. Cynthia, I don't want to be rude, but we just got a major case here, and I got to head out in five minutes. I know you and Eddie have had your differences, but you are friends, right? Sure. And he'd listen to you, right? As a friend? As a fellow cop? What do you need me to know? We want him home. His wife, Carol, and his sons want him home. Why? Because he insists on working when he should be home. Cynthia, what's going on with Eddie? He was diagnosed with colon cancer three weeks ago. And Dr. Bouchard told him to stop work and start treatment. So Eddie can beat this? Maybe. But only if he starts now. I don't know. Either he's sticking his head in the sand or he wants to keep busy. He won't listen to anybody and he doesn't want anyone to know. Will you talk to him, Andy? Without letting them know I told you. Please? Look, uh, I gotta go. I'm way behind here. I'm sorry, I... No, 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 I'll, I'll take care of this, but I... I gotta go now. Okay. On the switchboard upstairs, got another call asking about the Williams baby. Yeah, it came from a Tanya Dunbar. A call from her work, a stationery store over on 18th Street. You take care of this. I'll handle a news conference. You done with your interviews? Yeah, I'm done with my list. Eddie? Yeah, I mean, there's a couple of guys in Ganatoria I can get. Finish your interviews. If I can get a sector car to pick this Tanya up and meet us with the squad. Yeah, good. Uh, no baby yet? No. Mm. Good. Hey, what's this? 
But that's the family whose case we're working. You pat him down for box cutters? Hey, come on. You figured they'd give him their own hospital till this blows over. Yeah, what, they're on drinking fountains too? Yeah, All right, I withdraw the comment. Is it me or did it just get a little hot in here? Your interview, Eddie. Yeah, I got it. Come on. You're the detectives investigating the fire? Uh, yeah, Detective Jones and Metaphor. I'm Solomon. You spoke to my dad and my uncle earlier. Were you upstairs in the apartment when the fire hit? I go to St. John's. I came down as soon as I heard. Was it your sister got hurt? My cousin. How's she doing? Better. She'll be all right. Glad to hear that. Did you find Chris Paget? Yeah, he doesn't look good for her. Because he's been giving my family a lot of problems. No, he was at work. We verified that. Okay. What we'd like to get is uh, names of anybody else your family had problems with. Chris Paget did this, I know it. Sir, we looked into it. Did you? Yes, we did. You're not trying to find who did this. Whoa, whoa. Enough. They don't care because of September 11th. Hey, we lost a lot of people that day. And a fireman who put your fire out this morning, they lost even more. So? You do blame that on us! I'm telling you, in spite of that, we're all doing our job here. Hey, come on, Greg. I don't like him accusing us of different. If you can get a list from your dad and uncle, other guys they maybe had problems with, that'd be a big help. And that's what I'll do. Thanks. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. May I help you? Yeah. There was a fire over at Greenwich TV this morning. Yeah, uh, you have any information on that? Yeah, but I want to be sure this gets to people who can do something about it. Yeah, that's us. Uh, Detective Metaboy, Jones, you are... Jane Doe. Where are we doing this? I'm doing the right thing here. Whatever we talk about stays in the room. That's absolutely a requirement. So what's on your mind? The Alvermahis. They're the owners of Greenwich TV. Right. They've been in this neighborhood for 10 years. They're nice people. What happened to them was wrong. Yeah, no doubt about it. And the guy who did it, he's an ass. Always looking for an excuse. Well, what's his name? Remember now, I live in that neighborhood. This conversation's confidential. You have our word. Mike Bigelow, 1453 8th Street, 3rd Floor, in the back. How do you know he did it? We share a wall. My bedroom window is right next to his. I heard him. He was bragging about it on the phone to one of his buddies. Did he mention a name who he was talking to? No. Did he mention if he did this with anybody? I told you all I heard. We appreciate you coming in. I was never here. Tanya? Yeah? Thanks for coming in. Am I in trouble here? Not at all. Uh, we're sorry if you came across like that. Two cops come and pulling me off my job. It didn't look like I won the lotto. You called the Jefferson Hospital today asking about the Williams baby? Yeah. Uh, which Williams were you calling about? Nicole. Why were you calling? She said she was having her baby there. But maybe I got the wrong hospital. So she's a friend of yours? Yeah. Kind of, sort of? Well, we was tight in high school, but she went through some hard times. Like? Why am I here? We got a call from the hospital. They need to follow up with Nicole about something, but the number and address they got's wrong. She skipped out on a bill, right? Well, we don't know. <sighs> hey, girl. If you could write down whatever address and numbers you have for Nicole. Do I have to get in the middle of this? We need to find her. When did you see Nicole last? Two weeks ago at a baby shower. And I hadn't seen her for like a year before that. Does she have other kids? No. That's why we were all so excited. Because Nicole always thought she couldn't have a baby. I really hope being a mama was going to straighten her out. Wrong. So she was showing? Not really. But she is kind of big boned, I guess. Is her baby OK? Well, like we said, we don't know details. We just got to find her. Tell her, Tanya said, to get her act together. If she don't, she's going to lose her child. We'll pass it along.
prove that. Uh, Nicole? Yeah? Hey, I, uh, I work with Tanya. She wanted me to come by and, and check on you. Uh, tell her I'm fine. I got a gift basket she wanted me to drop off. Gift basket? Yeah. Who are you? Police. Who's Randy? I don't know. You called out Randy when we knocked. Um, I ordered some food. From where? Why are you in my apartment? Where's your baby? I don't have a baby. What's with the crib? Um, uh, I'm gonna have one one day. Where's the baby you stole from the hospital today? Where's the baby, Nicole? Nicole. Nicole, if we get the baby back, a lot of this can go away. But you gotta tell us where she is. I don't know what you're talking about. Do you wanna get locked up right now? Tell us where the baby is, or get tossed in a cell. She wouldn't stop screaming. Where is she? I couldn't stop her from screaming. Where is she? Oh, I'm trying to think. How long ago was this? Uh, a couple of hours. Is she alive? I don't know. How did you have her last? I, I, I was walking and she was screaming and I got scared. I, I went into a building so I could calm down. Did you go in there to get high? You left her in a shooting gallery? Where? What building? Can you show us? I hope so. Good. Come on. Mm -hmm. The father of this missing baby, his name is Randy. your feet there's needles and rats where Nicole uh, it's around here I'm, I'm pretty sure I can get some diapers and baby formula. I got money. We'll meet you out front. I guess you know why you're here. You know why I don't. Where were you this morning? Jersey City. Crashed in my buddy Jason's. Mike. We know you torched Greenwich TV this morning. I didn't do nothing of the sort. So the three witnesses we got who saw you do it, they what, had a simultaneous hallucination? Must be. <sighs> Let me give you a brief thumbnail on a legal system. Three legit independent witnesses with the same story beats one guy saying he didn't do it. Now you want to take my word for it or find out the hard way? I ain't saying nothing. And what happened? <clears throat> and the stays in the room. We can understand where that came from. You know, a bunch of camel jockeys getting a little payback. There are worse things that have happened in this city. Yeah. 6,000 people getting crushed to death. Right. So we're going to give you a little tip, Mike. And this also stays in the room. Now, what you want to get down on the record is that you didn't know these were Arabs who owned the store. That wasn't what it was about. Uh, something happened. Um, a girl broke up with you. Yeah. And you went looking out to destroy something randomly. Because if you say you knew they were Arabs, that's a hate crime. And that ain't good. And there's a lot of years of your life at stake. So, let's work on your statement right now, in this room, just us. Listen to him, Mike. No one died. It's just merchandise their insurance will replace. We're doing all we can to help you. So, uh... If someone was out and they did this randomly, that's what? Half-assed criminal mischief. Yeah, and maybe reckless endangerment. That's a fine and some probation. But it ain't a hate crime. That's for damn sure. Mike, we need an answer. We gotta go the hard way. Okay, yeah. Yeah, right. Uh, write it down. Yeah. <clears throat> So, uh, 
I was pissed because uh, yeah, this girl I like, she uh, she blew me off in a bar. Perfect. Appreciate this. Yeah, no problem. Sit down. All right. What happened, Nicole? And don't screw around with us now. We're past all that. I wanted a baby. I've wanted one for a long time. And I let that need build up in my mind. And it led me to do something that I know now is wrong. And I'm sorry. Why'd you pick this baby? No reason. You just went up there to see which one you could pluck? I've been on antidepressants and they've affected me wrong. And I think that they somehow screwed up my brain even more. And today I just snapped. Nicole. You had a baby shower two weeks ago. You set up a crib in your apartment. You've been planning this out. So what are you trying to sell us? That your brain's been snapping every day the last month? Randy Berryhill. He's saying it was your idea. Where's that coming from? Uh, Randy, maybe? He wouldn't say that. You know how much trouble you're in, Nicole? I mean, do you know how many felonies you've committed? I made a mistake, and I'm sorry. And the baby's okay, right? Who do you have to rely on? Who's your safety net? Who determines how you're going to get through each day? Me. Exactly. So these are your options, and you got to decide what's best for you. Be honest. Tell us what happened. And we'll get you some help. Work to get you less jail time. Tell the DA's office that we believe you when you say it was a prescription drugs gone haywire scenario. Or you play the martyr routine with Randy, in which case we go with his version, and you do hard time and lots of it. Nicole, you're on your own right now. Do what's best for you. Randy and Donna have five kids. Randy didn't want another one, and Donna refused to have an abortion. And I told Randy that I'd take the baby. I'd, I'd be its mother and I'd love it. And so he put the plan together. Who knew hospital layout? Randy, they've had five kids there. You taking the kid off his hands? That's what's in it for him? That, plus Randy was going to sue the hospital. Randy's wife in on this? No. How long Randy kept you on his side? Two years. We love each other. And when the time was right, he was going to leave Donna and start a family with me. And taking this baby, that was what, a down payment? It just wouldn't stop screaming, and, and I had one of my panic attacks, and I hadn't used for two months, but I do really feel that I need help, and I'm, and I'm not just saying that as an excuse. We'll see about getting you some. tell us you had run-ins with the owners of that store. What do you mean run-ins? You had verbal confrontations within the past couple of months. In putting the case together, we ran your name and photo past the owners and they confirmed it. What? I asked how the flight training courses were going. Maybe I told them to go back to wherever the hell it was that they came from. They weren't confrontations. You want to see a confrontation? Problem is, Mike, it establishes you had a pre-existing beef with these people. So you saying it was random, well, that doesn't jive. We tried to help you out earlier, but now we got to go with the truth. You knew what you were doing and who you were doing it to when you started that fire. Did I get screwed here? Did you guys screw me? We didn't know the owners would ID you. You didn't ask! Well, here we are, Mike. We got to amend your statement. Yeah, you screwed me. Did we put the Molotov cocktail in your hair? Did we light it? You got a major flaw, Mike. You blame people for things they didn't do. That's what got you into this nonsense today. You screwed you.
There they are. You've met Detective Clark. This is Detective Sipowitz. They help too. I cannot thank you enough for bringing her back to me. Yeah, so an anonymous tip came in and you found her in an abandoned building, huh? Yeah. I don't want to hear about it anymore, Randy. Guess what they're going to name her? Connie. <laughs> I'm still trying to talk him out of it. Yeah, you know, I always tell people that the real heroes in this city are the cops and the firemen. You guys are heroes in my eyes. Glad we could help. Can I get a picture of all you together? I want to remember this moment forever. Uh, we, uh, we got to talk to you first real quick. About what? Real quick. So what's going on? Nicole gave you up. Nicole who? I just smack you in your face. Nicole, your girlfriend. What's she saying? Was she behind this? Did she steal my baby? Five kids. Didn't want half a dozen. Sue the hospital. Nicole don't have enough brain cells to come up with something like that. I said that as a joke. You know, come on, like you say to someone you want to kill them. Those were exaggerations. There's no way that I think she'd take me serious. You're coming in, Randy. We'll give you 30 seconds to say goodbye to your wife. You don't do me any favors, huh? All right, turn around. Hey, you want to humiliate your wife more than you already have? Because I'll drag you out of here by your hair. Turn around. Hey, you know what? Why don't you kiss my ass? <laughs> I guess you gotta tell her. The victims had ID'd him as a guy they had problems with. To get him on the hook first, we let him say it was random, that it wasn't about them being Arabs. Yeah, that's the first statement. We went back and used the ID against him to get the full flip. That's the amended statement. Looks good. So occupied dwelling, that's Sarson 1, right? By means of incendiary device, minimum 15 to life. Do you want to go for the hate crime? Well, that's what it was. Then that'll push the minimum to 25. Which you'll do? Every day of it. All right. I'm going to need you later. I'll be there. Well, well, well. Hey, how's it going, Solomon? Hey. But we got Mike Bigelow in custody, and he's made a statement. Thank you for your help. This will be a big relief to my family. Well, we're just as happy as you are to catch this fool. Uh, I apologize for what my uncle said at the hospital. It was wrong for him to accuse you of not caring. He was angry, and that's not how he really feels, because all of us appreciate what this department went through is going through well some things came out of my mouth that uh i'm not happy about either we'll come get statements from your family tomorrow in the meantime if you have any questions just call what can we do because my family's lived here for 30 years i was born here we're americans there were times in this country it uh, wasn't a big plus to be Japanese or German or black. It'll pass. Hang in there. On that note, good night. How's Gibson doing? I mean, is he bringing anything to the table? Uh. So the dad was in on it, huh? Yeah. I got a bad hit off him from the get-go. Did you? You should have been there when Connie brought the baby back. Put her in her mom's arms. Now the dry eye in the room. What? I'm just still trying to figure out why you left Nightwatch to begin with. I told you, trying to beef up my pension. You got plenty of money coming with 
28 years? Yeah, well, maybe I might want more if I can get it. I put up with the headaches if you don't have to. There's no headaches. And I still got a lot to offer this job, despite what you may think. You sure about that? I mean, you, you come in late, you, you see my half step back, and your heart don't seem in it. I know you well enough, and something's up. What's going on, Eddie? You got a problem with me working here, Andy? You trying to get me 86? No. All right, then. Let me do my job, and I'll let you do yours. I haven't been working with him, so he hasn't had a chance to annoy me much yet. Yeah, the same with me, but uh, I can see how he's bringing Connie down. Well, I'm not saying he isn't a decent enough guy. Greg. Well, the, the thing you got to understand about Eddie is he, he's been on night watch so long, his detective muscles are atrophied. Yeah, he's used to... You want him in or out, Greg? It's not working. You can tell. Andy, I'm going to call the borough commander and ask to have Gibson transferred back to night watch or some other command he's more suited for. I'll partner up with him. You don't have to do that for me. I know how to handle him. You don't think his being here is disruptive? Yeah, well, I got my days, too. He'll be all right. You can partner Connie and Junior for now. And you can carry him. That's fine. If he starts to bring your work down, I'm bouncing him. This ain't got nothing to do with me and you. Oh, don't worry, I got it. I, uh... I'm sorry if it looks like I pushed him off on you. You didn't. Good night. Good night. Yeah, good night. Look, I know today you don't with a lot of mother-daughter stuff. I'm fine. I'm just making sure you're sticking to your guns and you're not uh, thinking more about reaching out to her, which, like I told you, is not a good idea. Yeah, I know. If you want, uh, come over for dinner tonight with me and Theo. <laughs> Order a pizza or something. Thanks. But, uh, actually, I, I, I got a date. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Was this uh, something new? Yeah, a friend set me up, so... But thanks uh, for the offer. Sure. Good night, Andy. Yeah. Good night. You and me got something to work out? Because uh, I don't want this carrying over. It won't. We're cool. converted to Islam yeah my cousin in Houston did he catch any heat since this whole thing went down not off his appearance he looks like Sugar Ray Leonard but his mosque got vandalized some graffiti a, a rock through a window nothing like what happened to those people today though and at one point Andy made a comment and I jumped down his throat and I can't say I didn't have the same thoughts going through my head when hell I I played it up like I was a racist to get the guy to go, but it's not like I had to search for the words. You're not racist. You're human. And there's what goes through your head and what shows in your actions. That's the difference. That's what matters. Yeah, well, I don't like it going through my head, period. And it sure as hell wasn't there before September 11th. When the attacks happened and we were all reeling and you were working 18 hour days. I look back on that and I wish we could have been there more for each other. Well, we're here now, right? Definitely. because all these rock stars stop by and call him by his first name. That's not true. Yes, it is. Then all the hip-hop guys come by. He gets all down. He gives them a little one-armed hug with the fist in the back like he's born Queens or something. He's lame. He's hot. <laughs> well, what about all the other VJs? What are they doing now? A couple years. He'll be doing infomercials on Channel 5000 at 2 o'clock in the morning. 
for hits from the 90s. You're just saying that because it looks like Pat Vaughn. I dumped Pat Vaughn. Why would I care? Yeah, whatever. See you, Jennifer. And I don't care about what Pat's been saying. Okay. 